222 day, we will talk about XRP and its capabilities with offline transactions. I just recently talked about offline transactions and XLM, and I have talked about it in terms of XRP in the past. However, it appears to have a lot of controversy still, and there is a ton of evidence out there pointing to XRP clearly being able to transact offline. Ripple is a top provider for CBDC offline solutions, and David Schwartz has confirmed it. And it all comes down to trusting devices and balance statements with keys traceable to a vendor. How at Manza Money we've developed a wallet that enables offline payments through text messaging, right? So sending an SMS and making payments to somebody and how we use this for stable coins um, and in the future for, for retail central bank digital currencies. Um, and then I'll also do a demo if, if, time, if time permits. That was a of a presentation about transacting in XRPL digital assets over texting and does not require an internet connection and can be used with stable coins and CCs. With all of the examples out there about how XRP can be used with payment processors in order to facilitate transactions in between different currency pairs, a lot of the currencies in countries out there don't have infrastructures that have internet readily available. So as our DLT financial infrastructure comes online, there has to be a way for every currency to be able to interact or else it won't work all that well. Here we have a few more examples from David Schwartz on how payments can work completely offline and how no online devices or databases are required for it to work with the XRPL. Here is one example here and one more that I talked about at the beginning and one more here. Here is an example of how it can work that I have used in the past. The end result is a financial radio data network that can be deployed and maintained for a tiny fraction of the cost of traditional cellular data networks. Because our protocols run on a wide range of equipment, supply chain problems and the use of specialized or proprietary equipment can be avoided. Since all the equipment was chosen for low power consumption, large national networks can be rolled out rapidly without the requisite infrastructure required in traditional networks. Finally, we propose the use of specialized user interface terminals to allow payments both within a village and internationally without the need for smartphones or other expensive end user equipment. By having a common and simplified user interface, people of all levels of technical competency can use CBDCs as easily as an ATM machine. So this is kind of a demo prototype. It is actually transacting on the XRP ledger with real XRP cryptocurrency using the radio sets and the protocols. Now the user interface is kind of a temporary construct. It was just built in order to facilitate the demo. Uh, our next uh, push will be on building a much nicer and friendlier user interface with, that would enable all the features of the XRPL. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and connect. So at this point, the network has completed the Diffie-Hellman key exchange and has initiated the AES encryption during the transport. And at this point, it's going to go ahead and just get the balance for the account that the uh, terminal is using and then send that balance over to the machine via the VHF radio. So I'm going to go ahead and send 10 XRP from the terminal and you can see the Zoom wallet underneath it shows 9,000 XRP. So we're actually sending to that wallet through the radio network. So you will see the balance of that wallet actually get updated by the 10 additional XRP. So the transaction that was posted from the radio network has now been applied to the XRP ledger and we'll see the balance on the Sun Wallet update by 10 XRP. So it's important to note that this is a full duplex uh, time division multiple access protocol. So both uh, nodes have an equal opportunity to speak. I, I Here are a few other examples as well. One of the big challenges of retail CBDC is to handle peak traffic as well as connectivity breaks or offline BIS. Our offline DLT can enable payment offline, a sandbox with HSBC Bank and 10 finalists for EHKD. A typical retail payment with POS but no internet starts at $37. POS scan the QR code and receive an XRP check of $2. Now is $35. Pay another $3. It shows $32. As the ledgers on the blockchain cannot be verified offline, double spending cannot be avoided. iBonus's offline DLT uses two trusted mechanisms to prevent it. 
Virtual card digital certificate specifies the initial user account balance. Transaction digital certificate specifies the latest balance attached to the user's offline ledger. In a typical offline transaction, both certificates are sent as a QR code to the POS for verification. If sufficient funds, invoice ID, dollar amount, R address, and the new TTC are sent over Bluetooth, an XRP check signed with the user's private key is sent over Bluetooth to the POS. When the internet is available, checks are submitted to the blockchain. With XRP, we can provide a complete online and offline retail payment system with instant settlement for a market of $2 trillion transaction volume today. This highly secure and trusted system will be widely adopted as the banking industry is converting to ISO 20022. This is your hard user interest the wallet. They send hello Manda via SMS. They get a response back from, from the server. They can then check their balance and see the supported assets there. Um, and then here we will send an XRP payment using their X address, which includes their tag. So the system makes use of tags. Um, and then we'll notice here the payment coming through. So they've received that deposit that we've, we've just sent. Now we'll send issued currency. We'll send the full currency. This is an example of how a stable point would work. Um, uh, and then we'll see that coming through on, on the wallet. We have also integrated with the ZAR stablecoin in South Africa, so it works the same way as a full asset. Um, and then now we see how this user is sending XRP to another user. They're sending three XRP to a user using their cell number, which is mapped to that user's tag um, in the backend server. And we get a confirmation that they've successfully sent that. Then we'll see on user two, the interface they see, they receive an SMS that, hey, you've received three XRP from this user, um, their cell number and their tag as well. Then they can check their balance, as we've already seen, they get a balance. They've got zero ZAR and zero full asset. Um, we'll just top them up here with some, uh, first we update the destination address, which is the user and the tag. We send them some full asset. Again, this is what a stable coin or CBDC would look like. Um, and then we'll see on the wallet, they will get a notification that, um, they receive the deposit and the source. Then they check their balance and they can see their balance has increased. So that is the Manda Money SMS wallet. Thank you for watching this demonstration. The example here doesn't have any sound in the video, but if you're interested in checking it out, just go and find this post. Here is an interesting one because it combines a few different topics and relates it all into offline transactions in XRP. Identification methods can be as secure as a public key. In the event that you forget to bring your RFID tags or a printed QR code, you can always use your face to access the FLAN account. This facial recognition system operates on the back-end infrastructure and is more than capable of working on the lower bandwidth radio networks. For authentication, users have the choice of a traditional PIN number or a more modern pattern signature. Users can change these credentials at any time directly from the terminal, and we can reset them for the user in case they forget. I only have one account on the FLAN, so I'm going to have my friend here help me with sending some XRP to a traditional self-custody address via Zoom QR code. Remember that face recognition, QR codes, and RFID tags only help to identify the FLAN account for both the sender and the receiver. To send XRP requires both the FLAN ID and the credentials.